Excuse me, little dog. Hi, guys. It has turned into a spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over-the-top beautiful day, here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is, uh, well, is it October or is it July? It is Monday, July 31st, 2023, rounding up the hottest month on this planet in the last 120,000 years. I'm I'm in my flannel pajamas already. After this rant, I will be putting on my sweatshirt, my goose down vest, and my Uggs to uh, survive the last night of the hottest uh, month in history. So anyway, what are we going to round out the hottest month of the year with today? I was going to come uh, on and do this thing. It's a pretty good thing. My buddy Rob Milkarski in his blog, Undenial, running this uh, long <clears throat> uh, rant by this fellow simply named Charles. Uh, excellent. Uh, but he, he gets a little bit into the hopium in the end of it. I really enjoyed, uh, you know, as Rob was pointing out all the links I'll go ahead and put this thing in here, if nothing else, for all of the links in here. And I notice in the middle of this, he has a link to some crazy-ass hippie sitting on a rock, sitting on a big rock in the middle of a creek uh, from 10 years ago, some uh, crazy doomer hippie. Uh, Charles didn't say who this guy was, just called him a depressed collapsitarian. So you might want to check out uh, that video from 10 years ago, that blast from the past. So anyway, before he uh, surrendered to the hopium pipe, I just want to share a few paragraphs from Charles's... Uh, from Charles's rant, then we're going to go over and hear from our old buddy Indica. Indica from Medium.com. I know I give Indica a lot of press, but he has hit it out of the park. But before we head over to Indica, just a few words from uh, Charles. As depicted by Joseph Tainter for prior civilizations, ours chose a similar path of increased complexity. Following this strategy, it has cornered itself. In my country, France, almost every service has been converted into an app or is in the process of doing so thus creating the biggest single point of failure. All this convenience relies on the continued operation of the grid, data centers, the network, chips, long supply chains, rare minerals, etc. <coughs> to me, a Seneca Cliff scenario is unavoidable. So he's going for the Seneca Cliff scenario is unavoidable and guarantees rapid material loss. We will lose our technological gadgets and crutches. Our machines will stop. Thirsty pollution will be reduced and assimilated by the organic world. We won't do much about it other than pretend. Will there be a population crash or a graceful decline? Will the planet temperature stabilize at a livable level? What will the climate's the ultimate stable population be? I don't know. Our current ways impact the web of life brutally. I will really be surprised if the planet sustains more than 2 billion people 
for long, I expect a crash in the following two to three decades. So uh, Charles has been at this game for 25 years, which is about 10 more years than I have. He sees a Seneca cliff, a crash within the next two to three decades with two billion people coming out of the uh, bottleneck in two to three decades. So, uh, anyway, uh, thank you, Charles, but... Uh, we're going to move on now to my old buddy Indica. If, uh, if I ever get back to interviewing people, Indica is on my short list. And Indica is going to explain to anybody who does not understand this why renewables will not end environmental destruction. Colonialism used renewables to rape the earth in the first place. And, uh, in, well, I'll just wait till the part of the story where he gets to uh, my favorite point of this article. It's good to see other people bringing up the ultimate truth that nobody wants to hear. But that's coming up about halfway through this. Take it away, Indica. Colonialism began with renewable energy, wind to sail across the world, solar to grow cash crops, and human blood, sweat, and tears to grow them. For the violent and resource-poor tribes of Europe, blood for oil began as blood for sun. Vile companies like the VOC, I don't know what VOC even stands for, the first multinational corporation technically had zero emissions. By this logic, you could say that early colonialism was sustainable, but it obviously wasn't, because the problem is not the energy source. It is what you use that energy for. Thank you, uh, Indica. It makes no difference what the energy source is. It's what humans do with energy, which is destroy your planet, if you haven't noticed. Colonialism actively destroyed natural ecosystems to plant cash monocrops. They brutally hunted land cousins for their skin and ocean cousins for their bodily oils, bringing many species to the brink of extinction and quite a few over it. To accomplish this all without energy slaves, they trafficked human slaves across the world leaving millions at the bottom of the ocean. Colonialism both actively and passively spread disease across the world, leading to genocidal levels of depopulation. Then, of course, there was the outright killing, raping, and stealing. Most perniciously, they framed this all as progress and civilization, which is still the frame we live in. <clears throat> we call this ongoing process capitalism or development now, but it's the same thing, destroying the natural world to make artificial profits. The truth is that colonialism never ended. We are still in it just with different branding. Colonialism was simply a process of creating artificial beings called corporations and feeding the natural world to them. 
not only do these beings, you know, corporations consume energy voraciously, they consume resources in general, humans, species, land, air, water, <coughs> whatever. A few capitalists got to ride these beasts and many people got intoxicated by their waste products, otherwise known as manufactured goods. But in the end, we all live on the planet and the planet is what is getting eaten. Thank you. Can you say planet eaters? Otherwise known as these giant uh, multi-billion dollar uh, multinational corporations. Planet eaters feeding the planet nibblers, which is all of us. Uh, in the long run, all that gets left behind is waste heat and a bunch of garbage and the long run is where we are now. People blame colonialism on countries and individuals, but the truth is that colonialism was directly perpetrated by these artificial beings. From the first IPO of the VOC, we have been surrounded by legally recognized artificial beings who both have more power and less responsibility than humans. I call these corporations AI because they are both artificial and intelligent and words should mean things. We talk about AI becoming powerful in the future as if corporations didn't already enslave half the world centuries ago, and if they don't run, and as if they don't run everything now. Hubris, thy name is humanity. <clears throat> the only programming we gave these golems is to maximize their own growth and to not measure <clears throat> what they take from the environment at all. Then we let them loose upon the whole earth, like especially virulent bacteria in a Petri dish. The metabolic process of this AI has always been to consume natural resources and human labor. Early corporations use solar and wind for this consumption, and then they massively accelerated with fossil fuels. But the fundamental logic did not change, just the speed of consumption. Today, we th think we can avert our fate by making the beast's energy source <coughs> renewable, which just completely ignores where the monsters came from. They started from cloth sails and sun-kissed opium. Changing back to renewables doesn't actually change the course we're on. Locomotion is not destination. Today, we think we can switch from ripping coal and oil out of the earth and just rip out lithium and copper instead. But renewable rape does not change the fundamental raping going on. An electric bulldozer rips up the earth as much as a diesel one. Luckily, Question mark, we physically cannot sustain this civilization on renewable energy alone, but an even bigger problem is if we could. 
as Dr. Tom Murphy says in his Essential Physics textbook, quote, If energy became essentially unlimited by some technology, I shudder to think what it would mean for the rest of the planet, close quote. And uh, so I don't know if Tom has been listening to Collapse Chronicles or uh, we just came up with the same obvious conclusion separately where once again, guys, the absolutely worst thing that could happen to this planet is if some sort of truly unlimited, renewable, clean, green, free energy technology were invented for the first time, or as these conspiracy wackos say, were given back to, uh, to, to humans. Uh, handing 8 billion planet-eating, bloodthirsty, savage apes a, 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 an unlimited uh, energy source, what the hell do you think they would do with it? They would take their planet eating on steroids. The only thing saving this planet is fossil fuels uh, because of its inefficiency and, uh, and renewable fossil fuels and solar and wind. It is their inefficiency that is uh, saving this planet. And the more efficient we make these things, uh, the worse the planet will be. It, 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 I mean, I still, to this day, uh, and, and it's not just these little lefty greenies. I still hear doomers. I am embarrassed for any doomer sitting here uh, talking about how humans need to develop a truly clean, green, renewable energy. You will see a dead planet real quick. Keep up with the frying pan of fossil fuels and the fire of renewables. Anyway, uh, I'm going to come back and read. Uh, he links you to this, uh, this book by uh, Dr. Tom Murphy. Uh, excellent book. Uh, I'm going to come back tomorrow and read some of Tom Murphy's book. But one more time before we move on, quoting <clears throat> Dr. Tom Murphy in his physics textbook, quote, If energy became essentially unlimited by some technology, I shudder to think what it would mean for the rest of the planet. Close quote. Thank you. Anyway, I could stop there, but uh, let's just uh, plow ahead. <clears throat> Modern thought condenses all the bad shit we're doing to the planet as emissions, as if the only problem with a planet-consuming dragon is its farts. Yes, the farts are incredibly toxic, but so is what the behemoth uses all that energy for. The self-preserving lie told by the AI, you know, the corporations, is that if we can, quote, just switch to renewables and carry on as before, or even better than before. This is both ignorant of the many threads that bind the future, fish, insects, animals, land use, and blind to the past. What happened before was the whole extractive machine ran on renewables to start with. Late capitalism is just ending up where early colonialism began and calling this 
a solution. The system has no concept of the actual problem, which is not how they do the dirty, but what they are doing. In the past, the beast chewed up land, resources, species, humans, and more civilized cultures using renewable energy. In the present, it does this even more rapidly with fossil fuels. A future of doing the same thing with modern renewables is not a real change. It is just a death spiral. Colonialism, capitalism, green capitalism. There you go. Green capitalism. It is all the same thing with different branding. We are all just scared cattle that keep believing we're being led anywhere but the slaughterhouse. The centuries-long project of colonial capital has been prioritizing its metabolism, use of energy and resources, over all other life on Earth. It doesn't matter how you do this. What matters is what is being done. The type of energy source used by corporate AI is, in the long run, about as relevant as Adolf Hitler being a vegetarian. As long as its basic algorithm is grow at all cost, it will inevitably cost it all. Changing energy sources may change the speed of natural collapse, but only changing course completely can avoid catastrophe. But please, do not think I'm ending this on a huh, on a huh, hopeful note. <coughs> there are much bigger historical, biological, and physically processes at play decades, if not centuries ago. Gaining insight from a blog post is about as relevant as a single cell in your body composing RNA poetry. <clears throat> My country, he is from uh, Sri Lanka. My country was consumed by corporate capital centuries ago, and I know the process intimately. I can see it in the empty pearl deposits of Manar, or the deforested hills of Nuwara Elia, or the empty stomachs of Sri Lankan children today suffering under the administration of the IMF just as we did under the VOC. I, I really wish he had uh, one time told us what VOC means. Someone please help me out here. It is, as my, his, as my historical thesis goes, same shit, different day. Colonial capitalism completely devoured the South centuries ago, and now it's come for us all. Renewables won't save us because it's precisely renewables that enslaved us in the first place. I won't get into the physics of why a seamless renewable transition is not physically possible. Read Tom Murphy's book. I am simply saying that it's not a change in trajectory at all. We're literally going in circles right down the drain, passing the past and thinking it's the future. 
the process of exploitation might change names and change colors, but the process remains the same. Early colonialism started with renewable energy, and late capitalism is ending there. There is nothing new under the sun, not even renewables. I will repeat myself because history repeats same shit, different day. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Indica and Brother Tom Murphy. Little by little, uh, people are starting to figure this out. They're starting to figure out, number one, the bright green lie of, uh, of this uh, bullshit uh, energy, green energy re revolution. First, you got to figure out the bright green lies. And then you under, once you get, start to figure that out, then you understand that it's frying pan or the fire. It makes no difference to this planet, whether it's fossil fuels or, or your damn little uh, solar panels and windmills. And then you get to the third layer of the onion. And, uh, and that is if we really do, God forbid, uh, come up with a truly clean, green, renewable, free energy. It will be the end of this planet a lot quicker than fossil fuels or uh, this bullshit that we call renewable energy today. And that's the bottom line. What do you think, Sancho Banzo? Anyway... I say get out there and enjoy uh, your old dirty energy while you still can. Bye, guys.